Hey there YouTube, this is SJM436 back with another video and uh, you might have already kind of guessed what this is, sort of. Um, not sure if I actually alluded to that I was uh, planning on doing this in a past video, but I got these little adapter boards and I ordered some uh, samples from uh, Microchip for the AT Mega, was it 32U4, uh, which is you know, a decently powerful microprocessor from them. You know, it's used in like um, slightly higher end Arduinos and whatnot because it has a USB built in, uh, USB hardware. And if you load a special uh, bootloader, you can just plug it straight into USB without any other uh, communication chips or anything like that. No serial converters, nothing. So the whole point was um, I had read online, I'd known about this for quite a while, but um, I'd just finally gotten around to doing it is um, there's a thing called an Ardu Boy, which is essentially a Arduino game system. It's basically a portable Game Boy-like system built around an Arduino. And so basically there's a Kickstarter that started, I'm not sure how long ago, but they've already, you know, they're already fairly successful. Um, they've sold through tons of them. I've seen tons of video on YouTube. Uh, but basically it's based around this uh, chip here and this is a 44-pin uh, QFP, um, so unfortunately not that easy to solder to, so I got these adapter boards. And so there's a whole community based around homebrew games um, written for this platform, which is uh, sort of a throwback to old 8-bit portable Game Boy gaming type stuff. Anyway, um, the games are loaded um, into the internal flash memory on the chip. So unfortunately that means that there's no... There's no uh, game bootloader per se, so um, pretty much the entire hex image is the game that every time you reflash, you're, you're reflashing basically the entire OS and everything and the game and all the assets for the game. So unfortunately, um, it can only hold one game at a time, that means. And I'm not I know some games store the um, like high scores and settings and game saves in the EEPROM that's built into the chip. So unfortunately, I think those get wiped every time you reload a new game. But anyway, um, it's still pretty neat. It uses one of these tiny um, OLED screens. This is a 128 by 64 resolution. It's, um, it's uh, monochromatic, unfortunately. There's no grayscale leveling, so it's just either on or off. But it's decent enough for the types of games. Think Tetris and uh, very simple games like that. And so I just wanted to show you a demo. So basically I soldered these chips up. I hooked this up to a full-size Arduino, which I set up as an, an in-circuit serial programmer, an ISP. And so I wired this guy up to here and I flashed the bootloader for this guy so that it can use the regular USB. So I basically, after I program this guy using this guy, then I no, no longer need this guy and and um, this chip here can be wired directly to a USB port. And once you plug it in, it just auto recognizes uh, once it has that bootloader on. So, which is why I'm actually able, um, you can see here, uh, this cord goes here and directly into the back of the system via a four pin header here. And I'm actually able to plug this into my cell phone, my Android. And on my Android, which I'm actually filming with now, so I can't show you, um, there's actually an application, um, I think it's called, ooh, I forget, something Arduboy Loader or something. I, I forget the exact name. Anyway, there's an application on the App Store for the Arduboy to program it uh, from your cell phone so I can easily flash a new game. Uh, so it sort of makes up for not having like a cart slot with a removable game. Anyway, so that is that. I've rambled on for long enough. So I just wanted to show you that I have basically all this wired up. Um, using magnet wire and whatnot, uh, just to give you guys a little demo. It's a little bit fragile. Um, this is sort of a, a proof of concept, not really meant to, you know, ruggedly be played because I'm actually going to be uh, designing a circuit board. Now, they sell these pre-assembled and in a very nice case and enclosure, built-in rechargeable battery, all that, for, I think, 40 or 50 bucks. Um, however, I wanted to see if I could just build one myself instead of having to shell out, you know, that money, which even though I'm sure it's worth it, I, I kind of find a lot of value in building stuff myself. So I thought, why not? So anyway, we're just going to give this guy a power on. You can see like the old Ardu boy, like the Game Boy logo scrolls down. And um, 
this guy here, let me just zoom in, is just a simple platforming game uh, by Team R, which is one of the homebrew developers on the scene. And I can go and start a new game. And you can see everything works. Though it's kind of hard to play <laughs> on such a tiny, tiny system. Yeah, basically everything works. This is uh, one of the games. There's, there's plenty by now. But anyway, um, so I'm going to reflash another homebrew game. And that flicker you see on the screen actually doesn't exist in real life. The screen looks perfectly solid and very fine detail. Um, but my camera isn't synchronized to the refresh rate. So unfortunately, that's the way it is. Anyway, I'm going to reflash another game, which is a homage to uh, one of... I would say my favorite game series. So let me just do that real quick uh, using the phone that I'm recording on right now. So I got to shut off the recording. Okay, so flashing the new game literally took me like 10 seconds. Um, though, as I said, you know, these wires are pretty fragile. So I had to absolutely make sure that this did not move while burning the game. Otherwise, it would have corrupted and I would have had to, you know, retry to burn the game. Anyway, let's just uh, pile this guy on. See, hopefully this starts. There we go. So this is a homage to uh, Castlevania, basically. And so I can start a new game. And you can see I can whip, I can jump, I can jump and whip. I'm just going to go through and play this a little bit. Just because this is pretty cool, actually. This screen is absolutely tiny. Anyway, sorry about not talking. It's just kind of hard to concentrate on platformers. But anyway, yeah, you can see here it all works. Um, this is actually really cool. What I'm probably going to end up doing, though, let me zoom back out, is uh, designing a proper PCB on this where I don't need a carrier board. Uh, now that I have a proof of concept that everything works, um, just design a single piece of you just, just like the uh, developers have made into an enclosure. Uh, I might mess around with the form factor and do something kind of neat like that. But anyway, just thought I'd show you guys what I'm doing. This is actually pretty cool. If you are interested in buying one of these, though, um, as I said, you can Google Ardu Boy and they sell them for about 40 or 50 bucks. Um, and they come in all sorts of neat colors and all that kind of stuff. So that's cool. I just wanted to see if I could build it myself because they've released, they've open sourced everything. Um, they have tutorials and whatnot on how to program your own games for them, as well as um, there's a lot of cool resources on specifications of the like schematics and um, all the source code is you know freely available. So that is really cool. So if you guys have any questions or you wanted to build one yourself, I might throw together um, some kind of semi short tutorial though it took me a while to get to this point um namely programming the bootloader onto this guy was a pain anyway hopefully you guys like the video and i will see you next time uh i died